morning everyone, or afternoon I should say. Uh, today is a little bit later uh, than we've normally done some of these videos, uh, but that's because I've got a cool new gadget. Um, as you might notice, um, things are a little bit smoother as I go walking and bouncing along, uh, and that's because I've got a huge shout out to my sister. Uh, my sister Ellie um, is really cool for a number of reasons. One of them is she got me a birthday present. And my birthday present was this sweet gimbal. I'd show you a video of it, but it's attached to my phone. So now I can move my camera around very smoothly. It keeps things from bouncing around. I'll flip things around. I think these are going to be a lot more pleasant to watch. In fact, I'm thinking we might reshoot some of the ones that we've already done. It's also kind of like a selfie stick, so I can hold it a little bit further away. Um, my sister's also really cool because she's an ER nurse, um, who we are all really starting to appreciate um, uh, in this uh, ongoing uh, national historic moment, let's call it that. But anyway, my sister, so shout out to her. Uh, thanks, Ellie, you can throw that up uh, in the comments. Um, but we're back uh, for one of our uh, normal walks, um, which uh, hopefully there's uh, no technical difficulties, but no promises. This is the first time I've been playing with this kind of all morning, uh, trying to get it all uh, figured out and how to work it. So uh, where are we today? I figured I didn't want to go very far uh, from where I lived. All right, I'm going to flip the camera around here. Uh, I'm going to flip the camera around here. There we go. All right, so we are at 7th. Uh, and Mini. Uh, and 7th and Mini. And I want to walk down 7th Street. Uh, there's a lot of real uh, homes on 7th Street. Uh, and I want to walk all the way up to the 7th Street Bridge. So that's where we are going uh, today uh, to talk about uh, some of uh, those sites. This is more in kind of near that old town uh, district. Look how smooth that is. It's so nice. You guys probably aren't going to get seasick. You won't have to take like Dramamine before going on uh, this walk. Uh, there's a nice gambrel roof here on this kind of Dutch colonial, which is real nice looking. I really like um, the shingles. This is something you see a lot in like the 1870s, 80s, and 90s. Yeah, sometimes in the 20th century, but looks uh, really cool uh, when they've got those shingle siding. In fact, there's a whole style of house called shingle style um, that's really based on using a lot of those. Well, poor tree might not have made it through that storm we had the other day. Alright, so we're going to keep walking here. Uh, one of the things I really like here, uh, we're at 7th and Division, if you're keeping track at home. There is a bright pink house down there. There's something to be said for not necessarily a historic color, but certainly makes your house stand out. All right, I like uh, the house up here. It is kind of, you know, pretty vernacular. It's just kind of square. There's not a whole lot of high style to it, but that's fine. Again, that's not a complaint. It's just a, uh, an observation. I like the stonework on here. This is now stonework like this. Um, you sometimes see it referred to as like rustication uh, if you work out or like semi-rusticated stonework. There's like $15 word for the day. But the way, oops, there we go. Um, all those nice joints sometimes, you know, cast right into the stone. Uh, sometimes they're all fitted together. It really kind of depends exactly what the builder has gone for. Oh, sorry about that. Moving things around just a little bit too much. All right, so there's another gambrel roof with that clip. Somebody's doing a little bit of work on their house. Hello. How's it going? Not too bad. We're just doing a neighborhood tour from the museum. Okay. You've got a beautiful house. It looks nice. Thank you. It is a gorgeous day outside. Let me point out that. Uh, this is a wonderful time. Uh, to be outside, to go on a walk. There's a nice uh, bungalow uh, down there. I like that low kind of arts and crafts uh, style bungalow. There's a couple of those. Um, so it is a beautiful day uh, outside. Um, so it's a great day to go on a walk, even with kind of the increased uh, rules and regulations. You can still go on a walk. You know, it's, it's really not that bad. 
I don't want to editorialize a whole lot, but I think people really kind of overstate how onerous some of the rules and regulations are. Ultimately, it's for people's safety, you know, and that's what's really important. I think people are quick to jump on and share a Facebook meme without maybe even reading one of the governor's orders. And if nothing else, here's a handy thing that I saw that I liked was at the end of every sentence add, well, I can't do this because thousands of people might die. Eh, then it makes it seem pretty more reasonable what some of the rules are. But it's a, you can still go for a walk. It's a great day uh, to do that. Uh, we'll focus on the houses for the rest of our walk, for sure. Um, I like this guy. It's very, very tall. Um, it's got a nice uh, bay window up there. Although I think um, this summit, I, I'd have to look up. There's, um, when you have a bay window on like the second floor like that, sometimes I think it's called an Oriole. Uh, that's something I might look out. There's a lot of uh, new, whoa, uh, new construction over here. In fact, we got a nice little alley here. I always liked alleys. Uh, there was an alley by my house in McPherson Street. Maybe we'll go down that sometime. Uh, where do you guys think the coolest alley uh, in the Port Huron area is? You know, throw that up in the comments. All right, so we've got, there's a nice uh, four square kind of there, although maybe a little bit of an addition on uh, the front. Um, I like the green color. It's nice. Um, some more small homes. All right, so we are now at Griswold and 7th. Again, if you're playing along at home, uh, there are some churches down there. You can see the beautiful water uh, down that way. Uh, now this place, I like this brick house a whole lot because I really like what they've done with the green and the yellow that makes oops, some of these pieces stand out. I'm sorry, I'm still getting the hang of this gimbal, so if I make a weird move, that's why. Um, I really like um, the little bay windows upstairs. I like um, the kind of like brackets or dentals there that are in yellow with the green underneath. It really makes it stand out. So we'll walk a little bit longer. Um, there is... I will tell you um, a cool story. If you've ever been up to the Grand Hotel, uh, one of the things that you may have seen uh, is that the underside of the porch, like that one was painted green. The underside of the porch uh, hotel at the Grand is light blue. Um, kind of looks like the sky and the idea was it would keep birds from uh, nesting on the porch. It's pretty cool. Um, I actually worked for the Grand Hotel. It's one of my like kind of favorite stories to tell and talk a little bit about. Maybe I'll make a whole video about it sometime. But I lived there for a whole winter kind of by myself doing security work. So I know that hotel pretty well and some of the cool architecture on the island. Maybe this summer we'll go on a field trip up to the island and take a look at some of the homes there. All right, so I'm going to flip this back around here. We've gone. Another little block. Now, this is the East Shore Leadership Academy, what it's called now. I think it started like 2014, 2015, something like that. Um, not particularly old, but it's part of the school system uh, from the St. Joseph Church that we're going to walk by. There's another gorgeous home. I like the uh, shingles. There's two different kinds of shingles on this house, and it creates kind of a tritone look, which is nice. I really like that. Hello. Um, there's some just look going there. I really also like the long slope of uh, the roof here. And there's a nice bungalow. So you can tell the difference between, you know, some of these earlier styles that you see uh, are very vertical, whereas bungalows, oops, like this one, are very horizontal. You guys can kind of tell the difference. There's a great side-by-side -side contrast. I'll step back and hopefully we can see those. How these houses are basically the same size, but they look, they have a very different effect in them on uh, the way that they're spread out. Again, one's kind of uh, more vertical and you see that in the 19th century. As you move in the 20th century, it becomes more horizontal uh, like that one. It's got a long dormer, like almost the whole length of uh, the roof there on that bungalow. And there's a nice little four square uh, next to it as well. All right, so now we're uh, over here by uh, the St. Joseph School. Um, which is now the East Shore uh, Leadership Academy. So St. Joseph, that takes up like a, a whole block here. Uh, there's quite a bit going on. I like the uh, uh, the brickwork on this. I think the school came a little bit after the church, uh, but I'd have to look that up exactly. All right, so, all right, so my aunt, Michelle, who is playing along at home, uh, pointed out an Oriole 
use a bay window that doesn't reach all the way to the ground, kind of like, you know, that turret tower uh, distinction. Oh, sorry about that. All right, so here we've got, you know, the gymnasium. So all of this beautiful brickwork matches uh, the church itself, which was built in 1922-23. Uh, and this is a solid, like, textbook example of Romanesque revival. And you see that a lot. We When we looked at some churches, like, last week or a week or two ago, I don't know, time has kind of lost all meaning, <laughs> but... Uh, we talked about a lot of Protestant churches kind of look the same and one of the um, when it comes to denominations um, Catholic churches were big fans of this kind of Romanesque. It's um, especially when it's made out of brick like this, you know, it's very ornate um, And it's solid this gives you you know the the church is a rock and that's kind of the idea They want to project there's a big rosette there uh, in the middle with some stained glass. I'm sure uh, that is beautiful looking. We can actually walk right up because there's nobody here. One of the cool things I really like, uh, this is 1920s. Take a look at the tile up there. Uh, you guys have probably heard of uh, Puabic tile uh, that was made down in Detroit. Those are examples of it. So it's like a light green, light blue, kind of a dark blue glaze inset above these arches in the brickwork. Um, it's very kind of like Art Nouveau style in some ways. Uh, very much like arts and crafts movement. That's a great example of that. If you want to, you know, look at that or find a good a namesake for that. Um, so again, a gorgeous uh, church here from the 20s. Now I was just reading a newspaper article this morning. It said in 2018 they're thinking they might actually close this parish. They're not sure. There's a couple Catholic churches in town, and they're going to try and merge some of them. So it's unclear exactly what they'll do. Um, there's one other cool story when I was reading a little bit about this church this morning. There's a guy named Father Tom Connell, who's here from the 20s, helped with some of the design work, and he stayed here until uh, the 1940s. And in 1944, um, Pope Pius um, XII made him a domestic prelate, so he was promoted all the way to like one senior, like an upper level uh, member of the church, which is pretty cool. First time that it ever happened uh, to someone here. Uh, in Port Huron. Oh, look, there's a squirrel who has found his niche. Hi, buddy. Look, that's very impressive. I could not climb a wall like that. Um, consider me impressed. But again, you can see some of this more ornate work. I like this tile work. These kind of remind me of uh, the Spanish tiles that were so popular uh, in the 1920s. You got kind of a side door. Again, this church conforms to that idea of um, if you were to look at it from the top down on a plan, it kind of looked like a cross inside, which being a church, you know, that makes sense. Anyway, some more uh, neat images. All right, we've got a little bit further uh, to go. This one might be maybe a little bit of a longer video than I intended, but I am having so much fun uh, with this gimbal uh, and having it maintain um, you know, a nice level walk. I have to imagine that's more enjoyable to walk. There's a great Queen Anne there. This one I think is under a little bit of work, shows some potential, but these buildings require a whole lot of work. Uh, Michigan used to have a great historic preservation tax credit. Again, not to editorialize or anything, but I really wish that'd come back, especially as the owner of a historic home myself. But if you like historic homes, you like seeing them, uh, that historic preservation tax credit would be great because it gave people a break if they did work on like the outside of their historic home. There's another, this one's almost more, um, you know, shingle style with uh, the shingles up there in the diamond windows. You can see, um, here's another one of your like $20 words, is the fenestration pattern. Uh, and that just means the where the windows are. Um, fenestration always refers to windows. So another couple Queen Anne's. There's a second empire home here on the end with that mansard roof. I have to imagine uh, that little tower there probably had something on top of it at some point. Much like, whoop, this guy did. You can see it kind of doesn't look finished. Um, this is some apartments now. Obviously had some modern uh, siding placed on it. Uh, there was actually, very sadly, another great big Second Empire home. Like right here in this vacant spot. I remember it. Probably a lot of people watching do. 
uh, as well. And unfortunately, I think the church tore it down. The idea was that it was going to be a parking lot. And they didn't even have the decency to make it into a parking lot. It's just a vacant field. It's very sad that it's one of those great big buildings. Kind of looked like this one. Uh, big Second Empire home. All right, so we got the... Uh, O old funeral home over here. This one was for sale. I'm not sure if anyone uh, has bought it or not, but you can see there were a couple of uh, additions onto this building. Um, funeral homes were originally homes. Today, a lot of the times we see um, funeral homes today are you know kind of custom built, but um, they originally started as homes. The whole idea of a funeral home is kind of a 20th century idea. All right, so here is uh, the James Davidson house. If anyone knows uh, Chris Troy, he's a local historian uh, and filmmaker and uh, historic preservationist extraordinaire. He's got his own Facebook page um, for this place that he is restoring. Obviously gorgeous on the outside. He's doing the inside as well. I highly encourage you to head over there to that James Davidson. This is like 1895. Um, gorgeous work. Look, there's one of those eyebrow dormers that I really like. I really like, one of the things about Queen Anne is you can kind of just like mix and match your shapes. There's a square, a circle, a triangle, all still looks uh, really nice, very ornate. And you can follow the progress, just what goes into uh, historic preservation over on that Facebook page. A lot of people might remember this place as the old uh, Victorian uh, Inn. Uh, there was a, a fish restaurant in there, I think Catch-22, something like that. Um, it's got a whole history. Like I said, look that up. He's a, an amazing filmmaker and preservationist. Um, and you can find out a whole lot about the place. Uh, up here, uh, we have the Ballantine House. So to give you an idea where we are, again, this is Grace Episcopal Church. We're on 7th Street. Uh, we're coming up 7th and Court. There's uh, some neat-looking four squares over here. But we've got this kind of French Gothic revival. Ballantine House, which dates to uh, like the 1850s. is one of the older homes uh, in the area. Again, I think owned by a couple of uh, great preservationists uh, who have done a lot of work in restoring this place, keeping uh, the beauty of it up. Uh, these really ornate places, I think, add a whole lot to the character of the neighborhood. All right, we've got um, the uh, First Congregational Church, which we've talked a little bit about before and we are kind of behind the museum now so there's the camera cabin maybe we'll do a whole video over on that sometime uh, but that's from a little bit west about nine miles west of town also dates to about 1850 so that's one of the things um deborah asked uh, so that's the james davidson house um so james davidson manor i think is the name of the facebook page if you look that up um Maybe uh, after I'm done, I'll go back and add um, a link to that uh, in the description here. So anyway, the cabin that's right over there um, also dates to this about the same time as that house, which really tells you kind of a um, couple of t stories about development here uh, in St. Clair County in the 1850s and 60s. It really was where you were um, here in Port Huron in the 1850s. They definitely weren't like dipping their own candles, you know, living in a sod house like Little House on the Prairie or anything like that. There were some very ornate homes being built and some rich people who were already living here, which really tells you a whole lot about the uh, industry and the strategic location of Port Huron. Again, these are a few homes we've looked at. I know in the last video I did, uh, when we were in this neighborhood, when we walked past uh, St. John's up here, uh, we had some technical difficulties, so we'll walk by it again. If you've already seen it, well, you drive past it every day, you're going to see it again. All right, so we've got um, the towers over here. So this is actually one of the tallest buildings in St. Clair County, believe it or not, uh, which maybe tells you a little bit about urbanization uh, in the county compared to places uh, like Detroit. There is um, whoop, another great... Uh, Dutch uh, colonial with that gambrel roof. Nice uh, columns there. Alright. It would be a shame. Bill was worried about the old Smith funeral home meeting the wrecking ball. It might. I don't know. It's a good question. Um, so here's another home from the 1920s um, that is a 
textbook example of colonial revival. We saw some of these over in uh, Sherman Woods as well. This one's very much like a federal style. I really like um, the entire door surround here uh, where it's got that urn and a broken pediment that is very like federal style. And then again, this is like 1920s um, colonial revival. Uh, so here's another like architectural term for you. Um, so see above this window, there's this like, it's technically a form of arch. A lot of times we see arches, they're round or loopy, kind of like you see over there is a round arch. This is technically an arch where the bricks are going the other way and there's a big keystone in the middle. It's called a flat arch or a jack arch. Um, so it's just one of the styles. And here we are back at uh, St. John's, which is, actually has the original steeple uh, from I think the 1870s church. Uh, I didn't bring my notes to that one back. Uh, but I think the building itself dates to like 1906. It's another gorgeous building with uh, the stained glass. Uh, these churches just kept expanding and expanding. In fact, we can even see the Michigan sesquicentennial sign here. Um, founded in 1864, more than 150 years of continuous operation. So that's a very beautiful building here. And we can see there is another sign here as well. St. John's United Church of Christ. We'll hold on that and give everybody a chance to uh, read one of the historic site signs. So again, one of the, one of the older uh, churches in the city. We can see a lot more of it there. This church uh, was strongly associated with the German uh, community in town. In fact, of my own family background, I have some of my uh, great-grandmother's uh, paperwork from the church that's in German. Um, a lot of churches, a lot of the German, yeah, it's not only in Port Huron, but the Thumb especially. Uh, lots of Germans moved to the Thumb. Um, they were still a very vibrant speaking German until about World War I. World War I is really when you see that change. A lot of people kind of give up the German. Uh, people kind of went crazy in World War I, just like, you remember the whole nonsense with like, oh, these aren't French fries, they're freedom fries. They did the same thing in World War I, except they were talking about, oh, instead of sauerkraut, it's called liberty cabbage. And people were just anti-anything German um, just because of the war. Now, I know we've been walking and talking for quite a while, but... Um, I love this gimbal so much. We're going to go up here uh, and we're going to talk just a little bit about uh, the 7th Street Bridge, uh, which is, I think, one of the other cool bridges in town. Morning. Good morning. What a fine hat. Thank you. We're still maintaining our nice six foot distance, but it is a nice day to go out and walk uh, outside. There's a couple other people uh, out there as well. We can see the back of the Masonic building, the Mac of uh, the AT&T building that we've talked about in some other earlier videos. If you like these videos, uh, I've made a playlist. You should be able to find all of them on the Port Huron page. So you can go back and uh, read the, or watch these as you enjoy them. Uh, we've got the Salvation Army building over there. All right, so um, the 7th Street Bridge, talk about as we walk up to it, uh, was designed by a firm, J.A.L. Waddell. Um, he um, was one of the last bridges he designed in like 1933. So just like um, the Military Street Bridge uh, and the 10th Street Bridge, there were earlier bridges, uh, but they had gotten replaced. Bridges only have uh, so long of an active life. Uh, so the bridges had been uh, replaced. This one was replaced in the 1930s during uh, the Great Depression. Uh, but you saw a lot of... Uh, infrastructure work uh, being done at that time. That's why we've got kind of like an Art Deco style tower there um, for the bridge controller. However, uh, the tower uh, was updated uh, in 1970. Uh, they changed the look of it just a little bit. And that's when they replaced the railings. There were these really cool cast iron, uh, very ornate railings on the bridge. And then they were just placed by like functional aluminum. That one's probably a little disappointing, but um, that's the 70s. So we are at uh, 7th here, Lapeer and Water. Uh, Lapeer goes off to the left here. Water goes off uh, to the right. Looks like we've 
in just a couple seconds to get across. We'll do that. Um, there were a large number of buildings off this way. Uh, down up here, this area has changed pretty significantly in the last 30 years. Maybe we'll do a whole video on that. I know I want to come back and talk about the Oddfellows Hall here. I bet you not one in a thousand people have looked up to see where it says I-O-O-F on uh, the building right there and the other buildings that were kind of part of that block. We'll talk about that later. Anyway, I want to walk up to the 7th Street Bridge. Uh, this is the only uh, single leaf um, a bascule bridge like this uh, in the state. So this is the bridge instead of splitting in the middle it's all right down here at this end and stands straight up. It's something like 114 feet long um, and it's pretty impressive when you see that stand straight up. Uh, the time when they added a little bit of work in these railings in the 70s is the same time they dug the tunnel under the other side. Uh, so that'll be its own walk uh, for sure. So there's the uh, 10th Street Bridge down there, the 7th Street Bridge and the McMoran Tower, and the Military Street Bridge down there. So 7th Street Bridge, you can see this great Art Deco font carved right here in the side. 7th Street Bridge. And we can see Port Huron, Michigan, Fred Kemp, who was the mayor in 1932, J.A.L. Waddell, consulting engineer, the Wisconsin Bridge and Iron Company. And there we can see the gap uh, in the bridge. All right, so I want to thank everybody for coming along. Like I said, I know this one was kind of long, um, but there's a lot of cool things on 7th Street uh, to see. Here, I'll pick like the most Port here on background I can find. There we go. So thanks again so much everyone for coming along in these walks. I hope that you guys uh, have enjoyed them and learned something. I'm always taking requests. I do read all the comments on here. I know we've had a lot of requests to go up by Fort Crash and to go maybe into South Park or the Lincoln Park area and they're on my list for sure. Um, so this is, um, I really enjoy uh, doing this. My sister is commenting. Uh, I again want to thank her so much for uh, this gimbal. I really enjoyed it. She says my hat's cocked. It's jaunty. It's a great way to wear a straw hat on a nice uh, summer day uh, like today. So if you've enjoyed what you've seen, um, you can always uh, watch the rest of these videos on Facebook. Um, you can uh, like the museum page, share these uh, with your friends, tell them about it. I'm still getting the hang of this, I promise. I'll learn how to drive. Um, uh, you can share these, and you can always support the museum directly. I know everybody's having kind of a tough time. We've been having some virtual staff meetings talking about, you know, when we might be able to reopen. Um, it'll happen. Uh, it's just a matter of when. But, you know, it's we're living in historic times for sure. Uh, so we'll see. We look forward to seeing all of you. sites this summer. Uh, you can always get your tickets now or make a donation to the museum right now. I know we'd really appreciate it. Uh, or become a member. The memberships go for a full year uh, from when it is that we are able uh, to reopen to the public. Uh, so again, this is Andrew Gerber. Thank you so much uh, for coming along this walk with me today. I really appreciate it and I look forward to doing more of these and keeping everyone uh, from being seasick. So uh, with that, uh, enjoy the history in your own backyard. All right, take care.